what I want you to do, I want you to go grab a bottle of corn syrup and I want you to taste it. You got that? Okay, next I want you to go back into that cabinet and find you that bottle of agave you bought a long time ago and taste that. Now you tell me, which of the two tastes sweeter? You should have said agave. Agave is much sweeter than corn syrup. And I'm willing to bet that you did not know that. They're telling you zero grams of high fructose corn syrup. I consider that deceitful because it's still corn syrup. Yes, there's a distinct difference between high fructose corn syrup and regular corn syrup. Because of this, you can very easily differentiate the two just by taste alone. Now, agave is not like the perfect sub for high fructose corn syrup, mainly because it doesn't come from corn, but it is pretty dang close. Now, I've been doing a lot of work dealing with corn syrup, mainly because of this video right here. Now, this video got me hot because corn syrup is portrayed as like this evil demon ingredient that you should avoid at all costs. It was even equated to have the same sweetness as, say, honey. But this is simply not true. So in today's video, I'll be discussing what corn syrup is and try to figure out, is it really the problem? It doesn't matter who you are, whether you're a big food selling Doritos or you're a local baker selling, you know, the next level croissant. You need something that will draw the people in. It is very common to be bombarded with large portions, over the top fillings, you know, crazy sweets just by opening up your phone. Come with me to try the most viral TikTok food in New York City. Only eating the craziest viral food in New York City for 24 hours. And to kick things off. Only eating viral food for a full day in LA. Okay. This generally flies in the face of good nutrition. Typically, you need to eat less food. But that's not the case nowadays. And I've come to a spot that I've been seeing everywhere known for serving platters at a ridiculous price. In my hand is option one from Food Coma. Is a bottle of corn syrup more dangerous than anything you may get from any deli, bakery, or viral food trend these days? Today's video, we're gonna go over some applications of corn syrup, but we're also gonna learn what corn syrup is and what high fructose corn syrup is as well, because the two are not the same. I, I wanna repeat, high fructose corn syrup and corn syrup are not the same. So let's get into some examples because high fructose corn syrup, as we all know, is a very controversial ingredient. High fructose corn syrup is a weapon, weapon of mass destruction that basically food scientists use an understanding about hibernating animals like bears. We're gonna add it obviously to sodas, and we're going to make people insatiable. We're make, going to make their bodies and their brains think that they're preparing for winter that's never coming. So I think this is an obvious one to avoid. This is what corn syrup actually looks like. So can you imagine how inflammatory and damaging this can be to your vascular health? High fructose corn syrup is the most deadly carbohydrate on the planet. With high fructose corn syrup, we have two major problems. Is that because it's a synthetic version of fructose that has been derived from corn, it is so high on the glycemic index, it's such a, a man-made synthetic toxic form of sugar, it immediately damages the liver. Now the first clip is of Casey means kt means is a maha influencer and she is not to be trusted and depending on when this video comes out she may be our next surgeon general scary times indeed so kt means should not be trusted uh, no matter who you are or what space you're in and if you are under her influence i hope that you get out of it soon we are not bears fructose was not made for us to mimic bears fructose was originally introduced back in 1915 as a way to help diabetics with their blood sugar spikes. Back then we thought that if you can manage your blood sugar spikes, well then you can manage your diabetes. But in more recent times, we've learned it's actually a lot more complicated. Now, these TikTokers somewhat have their hearts in the right place, you know, somewhat, because they are shedding light on an ingredient that you really shouldn't eat more of, as I've said for the 30th time. Well, I don't know how many times I've said it. But what doesn't sit right with me is that they're going about it wrong. They're really front-loading the emotion, you know, scaring you, getting you to be angry, uh, getting you to be you know, anxious about these ingredients when it's just food. Fructose, by definition, is the most natural sweetener on the market. It is literally fruit sugar. You can't get more natural than that. But if you were to listen to these folks, even for a few minutes, 
you'll begin to become, you know, anxious, scared, concerned about fructose. High fructose corn syrup isn't even natural fructose and is chemically made from glucose, which makes it a synthetic sugar. So here's how high fructose corn syrup is synthetically made in a lab. Corn primarily contains starch, which is a complex carbohydrate made up of glucose molecules. This cornstarch is first broken down into glucose syrup using synthetic enzymes from genetically modified bacteria. Then, this glucose syrup is synthetically converted into fructose using another synthetic enzyme called glucose isomerase, which is also derived from genetically modified bacteria. High fructose corn syrup isn't even real food. It's an industrial chemical that's made in a lab. How you make corn syrup is by using amylase. There are two amylase enzymes that you need in order to make corn syrup. You have alpha amylase and you have gluco amylase. Amylase first snips up starch molecules, amylopectin and amylose, into smaller polysaccharide chains. Next, you add glucoamylase, which will then cleave glucose off of the ends of these polysaccharide chains. This is very, very specific. This is very, very efficient, okay? When you work with the enzyme, enzymes are the best, most efficient workers on the planet Earth. So what that means is there are no mistakes when an enzyme goes to work, you know, as long as the enzyme's folded properly. Now, if you look at the structure of amylose and amylopectin, do you see any fructose? No, there is no fructose natively present in starch. So what this means is there's no way to introduce fructose at any appreciable amount by just taking corn and making corn syrup. So the label is not bogus when it says that it has zero grams of fructose. Now if you want fructose, it's a very easy thing to make. All you need to do is take that mixture of glucose, I call it glucose water, and add glucose isomerase. Glucose isomerase then converts the already present glucose molecules into fructose. At this point, you have full control over how much fructose is present in the mixture. Enzymes work by heat and they work by time. The higher the heat, the less time it takes. So you can very reliably dial in the concentration of fructose based on time, pH, and temperature. This is how high fructose corn syrup is made very cheaply, by the way because it is much cheaper to employ an enzyme than it is to employ a organic chemist. But people don't know this. They still say silly things like this. Because high fructose corn syrup isn't what it sounds like, okay? It doesn't come from a natural corn, even though it says high fructose corn syrup. It is a synthetic made up product that is littered with dangerous chemicals and does a number on our digestive system. And I get it. Um, I get it. You know, if you aren't in the lab, you're not going to know this information. That's why you have Austin Science Food. Now to go a little bit further, a little bit deeper into corn syrup, you have what's known as a DE value. DE value is a dextrose equivalent value. It is a way to communicate the level of refinement of a corn syrup. Now, I'm not aware of the applications of high DE and low DE corn syrup. If you do know of good applications for high versus low DE corn syrup, please, by all means, drop it down in the comment section below. If you're a food scientist, I would love to have a conversation with you about this. But DE value isn't really relevant to the home cook because we don't really know what it is. It's blind to us whenever we go to the store to buy corn syrup. Okay, let's move on to applications. And we'll first start with high fructose corn syrup. Now, high fructose corn syrup is great as a sweetener, and that's really the only way that I use it in the home kitchen. It is the perfect pair for fruit because obviously it's fructose and fruit has fructose in it. So why not boost that flavor by adding more fructose? I'll make a gastric using fructose and sushi vinegar and use that as a way to kind of glaze fried foods. I also will add fructose to uh, sweeten my oleominates, uh, which is my favorite way to make lemonade whenever I have the time. Agave really just kind of adds a sweetness that sucrose just can't touch. I've also added agave to pie fillings, like when I made that Pop-Tart last year. Be sure to check that out if you haven't. So that's really all I would use agave for. Typically, I don't really use it beyond that. So corn syrup hides salt. If you have a high salt 
dish, i.e. you overseason the sauce or gravy, you can add corn syrup to it to dilute the sauce while also maintaining the body of the sauce with an extra add of making the sauce slightly sweet. Now these are all great things, but adding corn syrup to a dish will make it not super suitable for those with diabetes because again, you're adding more glucose. I don't think most people will uh, be mad that you made your sauce slightly sweet. I think most Americans especially like a slightly sweet sauce. So not too many downsides of adding corn syrup to a sauce. So that's my favorite way to use corn syrup. It's just by fixing seasoning mistakes. Next we have corn syrup as a stabilizer. So corn syrup is also very popular as an add to ice cream. So we kind of discussed ice cream in my Zen FAQ video. If you haven't seen that, be sure to check it out. And corn syrup's role in ice cream is very similar to what Xanthan does. In order to make an ice cream base, you need water, sugar, and some type of fat. Typically, you have both combined into one when you use milk or cream to make ice cream. Corn syrup is another form of sugar, and it's another way to stabilize your base, thus preventing it from splitting. If you didn't know, Corn syrup doesn't freeze. Let's make frozen corn syrup. For flavoring, I got high sea fruit punch and starburst blue raspberry. Try the blue one first. Okay, these are way better than a honey. This tastes like a starburst flavored Laffy Taffy. Okay, the red one is good too. That's right, TikTok already explored this topic when they had that frozen corn syrup trend. And that texture that you see will also carry over to your ice cream. When you add corn syrup to your ice cream, it kind of makes it more like dense and it knocks the air out of your ice cream. So it kind of goes from like a fluffiness to more of like a, you know, sorbet-ness to it, if that makes any kind of sense. If that's something you want, maybe add a little corn syrup to your ice cream base. Sticking with the topic of ice cream, corn syrup is a bulker. It's a good way to kind of fill to the mark when you're trying to measure a volume. So let's say you ran out of milk or you ran out of whatever you were using and you don't want to add more sugar or some other ingredient that you just don't want to add more of. You can always add corn syrup. It's flavorless and only slightly sweet and it's good at kind of filling up that space and getting you to the mark uh, with less product. Now you can always add too much so you got to find that balance whenever you're using it in your recipe. The only other applications of corn syrup that I can think of is its use as a humectant. Um, so it's able to kind of retard the loss of water. I can kind of see that being useful for like breads and other baked goods. If you find a way to kind of make a glaze using corn syrup, you may be able to trap more moisture into the bread. But, you know, that's just me off the dome speculating. And also it, I've heard that it's used as a way to kind of prevent crystallization in caramel making. But I was not able to reproduce those results in my own tests. Now, I'm not a candy maker. If you are a candy maker and you know of a way that this prevents crystallization, uh, please, in the comment section, let me know. But yeah, it's still very possible to create crystals um, while making a caramel just by stirring. It doesn't matter what you use. But yeah, that's all I want to say about corn syrup. If you still think corn syrup is an evil ingredient, please drop it down below. No, I'm not going to debate you, but I, I may hear you out, okay? And I also want to say that glucose and fructose aren't by themselves the reason why folks get diabetes and they aren't by themselves the reason why people become obese. It's a lot more complicated than that, but I'm not a nutritionist, so I can't comment too much on it. My hope after watching this video is that, you know, you've learned something about corn syrup, you learned some cool applications about the ingredient, and you're not as afraid of the ingredient. And also that you can kind of like push back to those fear mongers online who make you feel bad for like liking this ingredient. I like corn syrup. I like agave. These are great ingredients. Agave is a good alternative for diabetics because it will not spike their blood sugar. However, fructose is not something that should be totally dependent on when it comes to sweeteners because eating too much of it will lead to poor health outcomes. But if you have a lot of this ingredient hanging out in your cabinet somewhere, I'm hoping that this video kind of encourage you to use it up. There's no reason to throw away a perfectly good ingredient. You don't need a lot of corn syrup for it to be effective. So with that being said, everything in moderation, eat a lot of fiber, exercise as much as you can. And if you like the video, be sure to like it. And if you want to see more, subscribe. High fructose corn syrup. We know it's bad for us, but why?
High fructose corn syrup starts out as corn starch, but when it's separated into individual molecules, it becomes corn syrup. The high in high fructose corn syrup refers to the amount of fructose compared to pure glucose. And the liquid nature makes it easy to put in soft drinks and processed foods, but it comes with a cost. Like heart disease, increased belly fat, fatty liver disease, higher cholesterol, and impair your cognitive function. But it's most commonly in candy, soda, juice, drinks, fast food. Go to the grocery store and see how many products you can find with HFCS. I don't know, Austin, your corn syrup looks thin. I don't know. Hey, what'd you go to, Austin?